Assalamu alaikum viewers. Uh, let's see how some uh, discussion on drugs in lactation. You see, uh, this topic is very important, especially for undergraduate students, pharmacy, medicine, and industry, because they will be in direct contact with patients, and especially uh, pregnancy and lactation and some other target population, I mean special populations, require special attention. And probably that is the reason that we have to uh, look for gear safety. So objectives of this today's presentation is uh, to classify drugs according to the safety uh, in the patient point of view and list the common drugs. Uh, at this stage, uh, just to list the common drugs that are uh, excreted in the breast milk or secreted in the breast milk. So this slide tells you the drug development studies and usually the drug development studies are carried out in preclinical phase and the clinical phase. And the preclinical phase is usually carried out in experimental animals, whereas the clinical phase is carried out in human beings, remember. Therefore, 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 uh, the results of these animal studies are translated in, uh, in humans. Therefore, uh, the new drug development process is, is involving the flavor of translational medicine and we are the primarily focus here in case of preclinical phase, primary and safety, then efficacy, and then the rheumatry. Whereas it is reverted, the efficacy is on the top, and then the safety is on secondary uh, issue, and the rheumatry is there. But remember, uh, there may be there may be follow-up studies as well as required by the FDA. So the FDA is focusing on the special population and the special population, as I refer to. It may be pregnancy or lactation or some male and female of, in perspective of their uh, reproduction and you see uh, fertility point of view as well. So we will be focusing on these special population and rest of will be covered in other lectures. And you see a very little information, sparse information are available regarding the drug use uh, in lactation. Uh, so, so the FDA uh, was of the opinion that uh, there is less data is available, so they revised their 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 their, their, their you can say their screening protocol, and even they were of the opinion the FDA was the opinion that that even those drugs that have got uh, approval to the market shall be followed in shape of post marketing surveillance studies. Yeah. The primarily focus will be on this special population like pregnancy and lactation as well as I referred to in the previous slide. So the sources of data, data is a set of information. The source of data is from FDA and the WHO, World Health Organization, and it may be from the micromedics. You see, it gets a lot of information from the FDA data, from the WHO and other relevant literature information. Uh, remember, dear students, usually the animal studies uh, are targeting targeted usually on the on the dosimetry, the safety, and toxicity, acute toxicity, subacute toxicity. You see, but they are usually missed. Uh, their, their information are missed uh, in perspective of its use in lactation or sometime in pregnancy. So that is why that's the reason that when you get a leaflet of a new product, there may be some different statement like uh, studies have not been carried out. An experimental animal in pregnancy and its effects have not yet been established or there may be a statement like that that the drugs has not been studied in a lactating periods however it may secrete into the breast milk and therefore uh, the physician shall or the health professional shall, shall shall assess the benefits versus the risk and then uh, it can be used or it cannot be used so it's based on the data so this slide tells you that data is usually scarce or very less data is available in this regard. And perhaps this was the reason that the, uh, the FDA came with a drug guideline looking for the clinical studies to be carried out for those drugs which have got already approved, approved uh, for the marketing. So they said, no, we should have some fresh data uh, the, regarding the pregnancy and lactation. And all this was then issued in shape of a circular to the concerned authorities and and organization where they ask for the pregnancy and lactation labeling rules we rely on you see and 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 they say that the FDA can ask for 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 a clinical trial study or like 
targeting its 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 importance in uh, lactations or pregnancy ever the case is so then what should be targeted so this slide tells you that these shall be target the human milk study and the human milk versus the maternal plasma study or human plasma milk ratio you see that is very important and remember remember in case of lactation study it is focus on three parameters the risk summary the second is the clinical consideration and the third one related to data remember there may be data or there may not be data and there may be information related to risk summary or clinical consideration but it depends once you carry out your study and at the end of the day you come with the outcomes and this outcome shall be reported so if we target the risk summary you see so risk summary focus on these points especially the presence of drug in the milk concentration and milk and effects of drugs on the on the infant being breastfed. You see, but the point is the point is here we primarily concern and we focus all these points like the human milk study and related to the human milk uh, or maternal the milk um, milk plasma ratio. You see that is important. So in this uh, summary, um, you have been told about the presence of drug in the milk, effects of the drugs in the breast. In, Respiratory infant and effects of the drug on the milk production. And if you do not have these information, you see, you will just only report that these are not available or NA. Uh, the second parameter is the clinical consideration. And regarding the clinical consideration, you see, it's up to you that how you are going to handle the situation. But the objective is we have to minimize the exposure of the best fit infant so that. Uh, the hazardous or the adverse effects are minimized. And remember, there may be already set up data which is that gives you the information uh, related to the use of drugs and effects of the drugs in lactation. And remember, there will be a description of the clinical lactation study that may on either a previous study exists or it may not be there. So, in other case, when you get a clinical studies as per the, the requirement of the FDA, there may be the study outcome. And these outcomes may be narrated either in this shape or may be narrated in this statement one. Statement one is that if you win, you, you, you get a waiver and you get an approval like that, that the developmental and the health benefits of the breastfeeding should be considered. Here you consider that along with mother's clinical need for the product name, for which product you have carried out the studies and the potential adverse effects on the breastfed baby or child. So you say, you see uh, here you consider the best benefit risk versus benefit versus risk or uh, the result of the outcome may be very worse and in case of worse outcomes there may be adverse effects and this says then the narrative you have to write in the in the as a result of the risk because of the potential for the serious adverse drug reactions including you will mention the adverse drug reaction number one number two number three number four and it is advised the patient that the breastfeeding is not recommended. So the breastfeeding is not recommended. Here it is recommended, but under 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 observation, you see. So your statement will come back. It is no other statement than statement number one or statement number two is acceptable. Miss this is message on the slides. So the statement shall not be so much exaggerated as per the marketing and advertising rules, you see. It shall be regulated as well. Now, WHO, we go to the WHO rating classification and regarding WHO rating and classification, they say number first, avoid the breastfeeding if the drug is hazardous, avoid, to avoid the breastfeeding if possible when heavy flexion or other cases and these points are simply correct. Regarding the micromedics, you see micromedics is a software that gets the data regarding the tension regarding all the, all, the, all the drugs that we already have got a tool in the market and it has condensed the data regarding to safe practice of medicine. So, there can be four situations. Infant risk cannot be ruled out. Number two, uh, infant risk has been demonstrated. Number three, infant risk is minimal. And number four, the last one that is in fact, the, the, the milk effects are possible. So, so what is important now? Let me go one by one. The infants cannot, this cannot be ruled out. So, in this particular case, you have to weigh the potential benefits 
uh, of the drug treatment against the potential risk for prescribing this drug during the prescribing or lactation period. So it's more or less like that of the WHO, the recommendation or the FDA recommendation, you see. And infant risk, this is sicker situation, has been demonstrated. If it is demonstrated, so now, now, now you have to clearly say that the infant risk has been demonstrated during the breastfeeding or lactation period. So what is the remedy? You will go either for the alternate uh, prescription of drugs or you, will, you, 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 you have to discontinue the drug during the, uh, you have to discontinue the, 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 the breastfeeding rather. And the third and fourth points are infant risk is minimal, you see. And in this case, you have to, you have to consider the benefits versus the risk and to keep on going on the therapy in this particular situation. And, and milk effects are possible. So this statement means that the drug being used in lactation may alter or change the milk production or even the composition of the milk. So these are the points related to the micromedics. So now the second objective is list the common drugs that are excreted in breast milk. But for that, dear students, you have to consider some key uh, parameters as well. And regarding that, the prime importance is the milk plasma ratio. And what is milk plasma ratio? Milk plasma ratio means if you take a tube and put, you see the plasma here, the plasma here, and then and then the the, the milk is here. So you see, and here is a semi-permeable membrane, semi-permeable membrane, and and you take one milligram of drug, one milligram of uh, a drug, and you see, and so it is being here, and you shake it, so some portion of the drug will go. This is this is for example, this is valproic acid, valproic acid, valproic acid. If it is valproic acid, so what will happen? So, so our product acid drug is now being here, and some of our product acid will cross this semi permeable membrane and will come in the milk uh, as well. So, let's say you give one milligram drug here, and in the 0.3 milligram, you see, I will take another color, the 0.3 milligram one product acid is here, so the remaining is 1 minus 0.3 is equal to 0 0.7 milligram and this 0 0.7 milligram is now here so what is important to give you a message the message is the message for you is that in fact milk plasma ratio is the amount of drug in the milk and then the amount of drug in the plasma you see so so this give you a ratio and the greater the ratio here the greater this ratio you see, it means the more the drug is secreted or excreted in the milk, and thus this will have a catastrophic effect, especially if your baby is taking different fuels per day. So the number of fuels is very important. Number of fuels is very important per day. And if for per day they take seven to eight fuels per day, you see, then 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 how much drug is excreted in milk? and what will be the total intake to the baby. So here is another theory that 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 the total uh, relative infant dosing, you see, it shall be less than 10% of the mother's total dose. And how it is calculated? So you got the milk plasma ratio, you see, the drugs concentration in the milk, maternal plasma drug concentration multiplied by milk plasma ratio. And then you you then the, recording the infant dose. You see, uh, you will you will do what the drug concentration in the milk, this value and this value, it is multiplied by the milk volume, and how the milk volume that is you will taken. So I, if I, you recall, I in the previous slide I told you that maybe seven to eight feeding, and in each feeding you will determine the amount of the of the milk that the baby sucks. So. The total relative infant dosing uh, percent that should be calculated to this formula. And if this value is less than 10, then 10% 10 of the total maternal dose, then you can then you can then you can go ahead and you can use it. Otherwise, you cannot use it. This is a uh, some factors of the drugs that when drug goes from the mama 
blood plasma to the milk so 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 the total suckling and the total uh, effects of the drugs is regulated by certain factors so this gear can be either maternal factors or the drug factors of infant uh, factors so the maternal these are the maternal factors and these are self explanation you see you can see it uh, the most important thing is in this slide that during the parturition and the first week you see the abuser sacs in the breast of the female you see that are the gaps has been closer and closer so the secretion of the drug then it is stopped you see that is why in the first week in the cholesterol you see uh, a large molecular weights compounds especially like immunoglobulins or globulins are there and that work is the plasma protein is that work as a 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 defensive mechanism against the you know, different microorganism and it's a, it's a, as a, it's, it, it works as a tool of defense for the baby so as time passes on then that are grows and then the high molecular weight compound in that time. then the molecular weight yes of course less than 200 molecular weight compound easily are excluded however molecules like heparin and insulin having a more high molecular weight than 6000 atomic mass units uh, they cannot be excluded in milk and then the ionization point or partition coefficient you see as we discuss in the lipid solubility you see and the more the lipid soluble the more it will be in infection but you see there may be plasma protein binding this scenario is also due to effect and drugs like warfarin and glabinoglomide they are highly plasma protein bound in drugs and you see and this if another drug comes and that is displays warfarin and glabinoglomide you see so what will happen the free concentration of these drugs will be high in the blood and then they will go to the excretion so drugs that pass minimally into milk these are these are uh, highly protein bound drugs and that maximally that goes to their low plasma protein binded drugs and if a drug is more lipophilic it will also pass maximally into the milk as we discussed earlier so 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 now we go to the infant's factors and regarding the infant's factor you see uh, these factors are very important age and the term the premature if the baby is premature then the diabetic system is not properly developed and of course then the load of the system is considered as well as the kinetics of the absorption distribution elimination of drugs is also being considered and even the clearance of a drug is important especially that's going to affect the the infant's factor, the timing of the fears and the extent of feeling as we refer to. Now adverse effects of drugs due to suckling in infants, you see especially, uh, this is a very general slide, and the most important message on this slide is, as we refer to early, how the drug passage and goes into the secretion into the breast milk, this milk plasma ratio as we discussed early. Uh, the most important thing is that phenobarbitone or drugs that's going to produce sedation if it is more 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 amount of drug is created into the milk so it may go and even sedate the baby as well and that can be dangerous you see so the total suckling of the baby you see and the intake or feed of the of the of the milk by the baby that is decreased so you have to keep in mind all these points like the half life of the drugs the value of the milk being shot, the maternal drug regimen, the pharmacokinetics of the drug, these are some the points you can see it at your own. This slide tells you some drugs that during lactation it can create a problem for you and what organs are affected. So, so like uh, amedarone is going to affect thyroid and Krebi syndrome by clomphenicol and then opioid or narcotic analgesics and that the stratification may be there, the pre-side dependence, and then sedative and hypnotics. You see, the baby suckling effect is affected because it will also sedate the baby as well. So it depends. Uh, you can just study it. This is very much important, especially on this slide, because the mama may be a rapid fast metabolizer, and the codeine will be metabolized in a higher rate, and most it is metabolized in a higher rate, so the concentration of active codeine will be increased and this active codeine, you see, uh, is increased in ultra-fast metabolizer, a phenotypic 
whether you see and this can be dangerous even it's going to uh, like the, 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 the opioid poisoning situation will arise so there so will be an emergency you see in the detoxification center you see and you have to take support of the detoxification center so so what is important important to understand on this slide is that codeine can 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 cause even the death of the baby you see if the mama is a ultra fast ultra fast rapid metabolizer so so the drug will be metabolized with a higher rate of course the cytotoxic drug uh, cannot be given because it inhibits the growth and 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 with pharmacoglobulinemia is very uh, pertinent to phenytoin especially used during lactation and this slide tells you again self explanatory some factors you see some drug that appears with significant amount and can be dangerous you can study at your own um, then quinolones atropathy iodine containing compound thyroid some of the drugs are reputed again so you should be quite vigilant about this uh, nicotine decreased breast milk you see and then sulfonamides and hyperbilirubinemia the most important one is the primaquine and atropine time that glucose is phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency and it may lead to the uh, hemolysis of the rbc you see so so it depends on from drugs to drugs and from uh, what you can say the maternal factor are there the drugs factor are there and of course uh, the other factors are also there like the infants factor so general effects of drugs that reaching the infants in sub therapeutic doses these are long duration of drug that may sometimes accumulate so caffeine may accumulate and then energy may be there like like insulin use for uh, energy and then 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 you can go ahead remember theophylline is an effective respiratory stimulant that produce apnea uh, and especially uh, that, that 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 stimulant for apnea is a remedy for apnea in case of prematurity of, uh, of the infant so these are drugs uh, which cannot be given you see which cannot be given this is very important uh, so you have to keep in mind these for example aspirin nadrone benzodiazepine clonazepam and drug that affect the milk uh, production you see and these drugs are usually dopamine receptor agonist and antagonist ergotamine and pseudoephedrine and these drugs these drugs can create problem for the mama especially in during lactation so you should be quite vigilant about all these drugs these are intimate drugs uh, antagonist dopamine receptor antagonist and this can produce galactogogs and uh, galactoria you see and some 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 inhibits these these drugs inhibits you see and these drugs uh, stimulate this this class stimulates so you should understand this slide as well some drugs that can be safely used in a lactation but not in pregnancy this red one is that cannot be used in pregnancy you see but can be used in lactation these class of drugs that's non steroidal and inflammatory drugs some antihistamine is beta lactam antibiotics message on this slide is that these drugs are usually considered as safe provided provided the most important point is that the maternal dose is not when the maternal dose is not high you see and special advice is required if the maternal dose is high so what you will do you will keep in mind that the infant is not a pre preterm or premature delivery was not there there was no renal or hepatic disease you see or any other enzyme deficiency like glucose or fat uh, dehydrogenase deficiency so you can go ahead with the with the with these drugs you see just remember that just remember remember and in summary you should be quite vigilant about that that you should understand the milk plasma ratio and also keep in mind that the relevant infant dose shall not be more than 10% of the maternal dose i hope now you understand Uh, the drugs used in pregnancy in lactation, so that when you are going to use drug in lactation, you will keep all these parameters. Thank you.